I'm a 28-year-old man named Tom. I don't get paid much because I work in a tiny factory. My monthly income is only around $1,500, which makes life difficult. I always felt sorry for my wife, Sarah, because of this. I got to know Sarah through a friend, and we began dating. Sarah and I were both 26 years old at the time, but she didn't appear to care about name brand products. Every woman I know had an obsession with branded items. Although it may sound odd, I was quite well liked by the women. In the end, I had casual relationships with women who were kind to me, but they always begged for branded products. They would start requesting items like Louboutin shoes or a Gucci purse on the second date. These things, which cost tens of thousands of dollars, were much out of my price range given my pay. Therefore, these women promptly left when I refused. Ultimately, I came to the realization that I was just an ATM to all of these ladies. Sarah, however, was unique. I felt Sarah had excellent taste, and she always wore simple but elegant clothing. I've come to love her more and more since we were married. She has been such a comfort to me because of her modest demeanor and never-ending grin. My wife never complains, even though my meager income causes some inconvenience. She works as a temporary employee and saves nearly all of her earnings. Why don't you purchase some makeup that you like, Sarah? There's nearly no more toner left on the bathroom counter. Well, I was considering holding off until there was a sale next week. Marks the start of the Easy Peasy Super Sale. I believe it will continue until then. Really? I doubt that it will. Almost none remains. It's okay, I'll buy it for you. You constantly put off purchasing what you desire too much. Sarah, however, I don't actually dress up all that much, you know. Buying things for myself feels wrong. Additionally, you haven't been purchasing much for yourself. To be honest, I'm okay. Are you certain? I constantly feel like I'm bothering you, therefore I don't want you to hold back. That isn't true at all. I'm not reserving anything. All right, Sarah, if that's what you say. So long as you're content. Despite what she stated, I couldn't help but believe that Sarah was simply being thoughtful and wasn't purchasing anything because of me. I felt bad for bothering her because I didn't make much money. She may want to purchase as much of her favorite clothing and makeup as she desires. I am aware that all of her buddies are stylish, although Sarah never expresses it. I can't help but wonder if she truly feels jealous. I made reservations at a posh steakhouse, thinking of it as an anniversary present, since we have been married for a year. I'd assume Sarah would be pleased because of the restaurant's stellar reputation. I was nervous about not following the proper etiquette, because I had never eaten at such a fancy restaurant. Well, what counts is that we enjoy the food. I just want to enjoy the meal, so long as we don't dress badly, eat messily, or bother other people. After that, Sarah and I visited the upscale steakhouse. The chef gave us a warm welcome when he spotted us. The restaurant's gorgeous decor made me quite anxious. I questioned whether it was truly okay for us to dine at such a lovely establishment. Sarah also appeared quite tense. She carried a gray handbag and wore a stylish black dress. Although neither item was a luxury brand, they were purchased from a typical reasonably priced clothing retailer. The dress and purse were still in excellent shape because Sarah took wonderful care of them and seemed to truly adore them. Unless you examined closely, no one would realize they were cheap. Sarah appeared relatively sophisticated due to her excellent sense of style. We placed an appetizer and steak order. We got soup and salad because I had read it's a good idea to start with something light. The salad was wonderful and fresh. This salad tastes great. It's the most delicious dressing I've ever experienced. Yes, I do agree. It has beets. Very tasty. This soup is also good. Yes, very tasty. Sarah's soup was corn pottage and mine was potato pottage. Normally canned chicken soup suffices for me, but this upscale soup was incredibly excellent. The soup was delicious and sweet without being overbearing, which is a characteristic of an excellent restaurant. 
Afterward, we had the main meal, steak. It was really tender and juicy. The sauce was just right. It was my first time having steak so tender and rich in flavor. This steak is really delicious. It's so tender, it feels like it's melting in my mouth. Yes, it is. I really like it. It's the best steak I've ever had in my life. Jess, thank you for today. It was really delicious. While we were eating the steak, David, a manager from one of our client companies, showed up. I thought the last person I wanted to see. I momentarily stopped using my fork. That's because David always looks down on me, and I don't like him either. David works for Company A, a large corporation that frequently advertises. He seems to earn a good salary working there. Moreover, David apparently graduated from a very prestigious national university and looked down on me for only graduating high school. I attended a technical high school because I wanted to acquire a trade skill and got many qualifications while I was there. But according to David, being a graduate of a technical high school is seen as being at the bottom of the hierarchy. I worked hard in my own way and had my reasons for choosing that high school, so I really can't like people like David who boast about their education and background and look down on others. No, I guess it's more accurate to say I quite dislike him. We had this conversation before today. Hey, I came to observe B Company. Really, it's a tiny business, isn't it? It's nothing like our company. What's with this shabby equipment? You guys must be short on money, huh? Yeah, well, that's true. We are a small company and replacing equipment isn't really feasible right now. Um, you're Tom, right? Why are you working in a place like this? Couldn't get into a better company. I was recommended this company by my high school teacher. Even though it's small, our products have one of the highest market shares in the country, so I felt it was a good choice. So you joined this company right after high school? No way. Wait a minute, high school graduate, and already working. That's like being a loser in life. Why do you think that? I don't believe that's true. Because you didn't study hard enough to get into university, you're stuck as a high school graduate. So which high school did you go to? It must be a bottom tier one. Well, I went to C Technical High School. Huh, that's C Technical High School, the one where you get in just by writing your name. You really went to such a low tier high school and didn't go to university. Your life is basically over, a high school that even a kindergartner could get into. It's embarrassing to even be alive. There's no need to say that. I worked hard too. Worked hard. That's something a college graduate can say, not you, a high school graduate from a technical school. You didn't work hard. That's why you're just a high school graduate. You don't get it. David said this and walked away. It felt like he just came to be a nuisance. He was really annoying. After such an incident, I really hated David. I mean, who could possibly like such a person? While we were eating steak, David was smirking. Then he sat next to us and suddenly started saying mean things. Tom, you frequent places like this as well. I thought you wouldn't have the chance. How many months of your salary did you spend here? Maybe two or three months worth. No, I just came here for our wedding anniversary. I haven't spent that many months worth of salary. I'd be surprised to see someone spend two or three months salary at a steak restaurant. No matter how expensive, I doubt it would cost that much. Since he dislikes me, he can say such mean things and laugh about it. I look down on him for being so rotten to the core. Yeah, well, it seems a bit out of your league, doesn't it? Also, your wife looks pretty poor. What's with that cheap outfit? Suddenly, he started belittling Sarah's clothes and I got really angry. It's one thing to be sarcastic to me, but it's unforgivable to talk about her, who has nothing to do with this. Sarah looked sad and then looked down. I caught a glimpse of her face turning red as if she was embarrassed. That flimsy dress and obviously fake leather bag, so poverty-stricken. You can afford to buy anything better than that, Tom. You really are a loser. Hey, why would you say that? 
Don't talk about my wife. Even if you're a client's manager, I won't tolerate that. It's okay, let it be. Stop, please, Sarah. I don't like you being insulted. Let's just go home. We've had enough delicious food. I'm fine with this. Poor people should go home after all. Your wife has been eating only bread, which comes with the steak. Seems she liked it more than the steak. Poor people just eat bread at home. We were stunned. Sarah started to cry, saddened by the whole situation. I thought about dragging David outside and yelling at him, but then a lady at a distant table said something. Well, you wouldn't understand the good thing about bread. What's that, sir? You don't seem to understand the quality of this bread, hemp. I don't see anything good about this plain bread. It's just bread, sir. You might want to stop there. Saying such things is not very appropriate. What are you talking about, chef? This is just regular bread. Nothing special. Only poor people would appreciate this cheap stuff. I can't eat something so lowly. My taste is too refined. Well, you think that way, fine. This bread is actually a super high-end product, you know. Really? The wheat we grow on our farm. Have you heard of Westfield Farm? Westfield Farm, the famous one that produces high-end vegetables and fruits. Yes, I'm the owner. My husband and I run it. We grow a variety of vegetables and rice, and the wheat for this bread is also from our farm. It's top-grade bread from the Westfield brand. I see. You said your taste is refined, but you didn't recognize the quality of this bread. We aimed for a sophisticated taste. Yes, this is exclusive high-end bread, only supplied to top restaurants. David had been belittling the bread, but it turns out the lady there was the one who produced it. Her name is Jennifer. Jennifer, along with her husband, manages Westfield Farm, a well-known establishment renowned for its vastness and its homemade condiments. Their condiments are quite pricey and popular among a certain circle of elite ladies. For someone like me, the prices were far beyond reach, and this bread was also a luxury item. Jennifer's bread, made with an original recipe, was unique and not available from other producers. It had a refined sweetness without being too sour, making it delicious. No wonder Sarah liked it so much. Although Sarah wasn't greedily eating only the bread, David, who may have never tasted this bread, was quick to assert that only poor people would be grateful for such a thing. But he must have been startled to find Jennifer, the creator, right there. David was sweating and seemed at a loss for words. Clearly, he was flooded with embarrassment. From my perspective, he looked quite humiliated. I couldn't help but view him disdainfully as he awkwardly tried to find an excuse. Ha, is that so? My apologies. Well, I haven't eaten much bread before. Sorry about that. You don't need to tell me an apology. Perhaps you should apologize to these two. Me apologize to him? Yes, you've been saying some terrible things. It was quite unbearable to listen to. You should properly apologize. But I'm a manager at his client's company, and he's just a low-level employee. I don't want to apologize to someone who's just a high school graduate. I hate the bottom tier people. Oh, you hate the bottom tier? So you hate someone like me who started from high school too? You look down on me. Well, that's not what I, I mean, no, it's different. I was just saying that about Tom. It didn't sound like that, did it, Jennifer? No, it didn't. You appear to be looking down on all high school graduates. Just to let you know, my husband and I, who run Westfield Farm, are also high school graduates. That's, I mean, no, that's not what I. Enough with the excuses. Can you please leave? You're ruining the enjoyment of our delicious foods, right? Chef, yes, that's right. We put our hearts into making food for our customers to enjoy, but with someone like you here, it ruins the atmosphere. Please leave. Your presence is no longer welcome here. All right, I understand. I'm sorry. David apologized to the chef, Jennifer, and us before leaving. Although it was an unpleasant encounter with a mean person, 
Having support like theirs made me feel relieved. People like David behaving arrogantly would surely be unwelcome in high-class establishments. I figured he must have been condescending to the staff as well. Sarah was very grateful to the chef and Jennifer. Thank you so much for defending us. I was nervous coming to such a nice place for the first time, and these clothes and bags are just affordable items I bought with the money I earned from my part-time job. I was worried they might be inappropriate. Don't worry about that. You're well presented, and you haven't done anything wrong. Just be confident and proud of who you are. Exactly. What does it matter if something is inexpensive? It suits you well and looks clean. People aren't better just because they own expensive things. My husband and I earn decently as a couple, but I'd never desired expensive brand items. It's enough that something fits well and looks good. I guess feeling ashamed or sorry for myself is the real embarrassment. I'll try to be more confident. That's right. Confidence is important. You did nothing wrong, so be proud and come visit us again. We were happy to see you enjoying our bread. Thank you. It seemed that my wife was self-conscious about her attire looking inexpensive. The clothes and bags she wore were bought with her own earnings, but as a temp worker, her salary is modest. Seeing her friends who are quite well off and own branded bags and shoes, she must have felt a bit envious. On the contrary, I felt even more guilty. If only my earnings were better, she could have had the option to be a stay-at-home wife and bought herself plenty of beautiful clothes and bags. Due to our financial struggles and my lack of income, she has to work, but Sarah never complained about working. She's kind, considerate, and truly more than I deserve. We then paid our bill and left the restaurant, grateful for the unexpected support and feeling a bit better about ourselves. When that man was being mean, I wasn't sure how to react, but it's reassuring to know we have allies. I felt very reassured. David always acts like that when he comes to our place, but I didn't want to see him either. Well, he got told off by the chef and Jennifer and screeched away. I'm really glad we could enjoy such delicious steak today. Thank you. It must have been expensive, right? Don't worry about it. I wanted to take you there. If it was delicious, then that's all that matters. Let's go again sometime. Let's do that. After that, I worked tirelessly at my job and gradually began to be recognized by my peers. I had always been at the bottom, but my boss finally acknowledged my hard work. I was thrilled that my efforts were being fairly evaluated. Sarah was overjoyed when she heard about my promotion. Congratulations on your promotion. I'm so glad your hard work paid off. Yeah, I'm glad there are people who recognize my efforts. If you work sincerely, it eventually pays off. That's true. I want to learn from you. I want to be your support. Sarah, you already are a great support to me. Thanks for everything. My pleasure. Oh, by the way, I've made a reservation for this Saturday. I wanted to celebrate your promotion. For my promotion? Where? At that steak restaurant. I wanted to go there again with you. Really? That's great. Then let's go this Saturday. Thank you so much. Sarah had reserved the same high-end steak restaurant for my promotion celebration. I was so moved I almost cried. How lucky I was to have such a thoughtful wife. Then came Saturday and we decided to dress up a bit and go to the restaurant. Although we're not rich, we chose affordable clothes that still looked nice. When we entered, the chef and Jennifer were there. I thought Jennifer was there to dine again today. I heard it's a celebration. Please, please accept this as a gift from us, Jennifer said, handing us a bottle of wine. This is wine, I asked, surprised by its appearance. Yes, we got high-quality wine. It's exquisite, so please try it. That's too generous. Such an expensive item we couldn't possibly accept, I protested. It's our pleasure. Consider it a small token of our appreciation. Lucky us, we gratefully accepted his kind offer. All right, let's enjoy it. The wine was delicious, sweet with a smooth finish. 
I wanted them to try this exceptional quality. Enjoy it, Jennifer said. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have such delicious wine. Tom, make sure you thank your wife. She's the one you should be grateful to. Sarah, thank you so much. Today we're celebrating thanks to you. Let's enjoy our meal. Such a lovely couple to support each other like this is wonderful, Jennifer said. Then she handed us a set of high-end condiments. The dressings alone were worth around $15 each. I usually opt for dressings that cost about $1.80, so I wondered what these high-end dressings would taste like. There was also a large package of premium fruits, Westfield Farm strawberries, packaged in wooden boxes, sold for about $200. These were high-end fruits that someone like me would never normally afford. These are the legendary Westfield strawberries. Can we really accept such wonderful gifts? Yes, please do. Think of it as a thank you for appreciating our bread. The strawberries looked so beautiful and large I'd never seen anything like them. Westfield Farm is truly remarkable with its extensive lands, Jennifer said. I faced many challenges when I first got married. My husband and I worked tirelessly in the fields every day, but we supported each other and eventually built a large farm so you two should continue to support each other as well. No matter what, stand by each other and move forward together. Yes, we will. Thank you so much. Jennifer seemed like a refined and graceful lady now, but she must have gone through a lot of struggles. She wasn't flaunting luxury brands, but was well made up, and her clothes were well cared for. Her shoes were polished too, showing she had a comfortable lifestyle. I aspired to be like her. No matter how tough things get, I want to be someone who supports my spouse and works hard for our dreams. With that in mind, I thought of collaborating with Sarah and enjoying our endeavors together. The steak that day was incredibly delicious. The last time, too, it was delicious, but maybe it tasted even better wrapped in the happy atmosphere. Watching Sarah happily eating steak also warmed my heart. A year passed, and as a section chief, I was working hard and came home with a bouquet of flowers for our wedding anniversary. It was Sarah's favorite, a pink bouquet. I suggested going to the steak restaurant again, but Sarah seemed hesitant. I wondered if she didn't want to go there anymore. What's wrong? Didn't you like that place? We don't have to go if you don't want to. Well, I do want to go, but we can't. I went to the doctor today and found out I'm pregnant. You're pregnant? That's incredible. Yes, our long-awaited baby. I'm so happy. I'll be a good mother, and I'll do my utmost to be a great father. Let's keep working hard together. Yes, we'll help each other out no matter what. Then Sarah decided to quit her job, and she gave birth to a boy. He was adorable with big eyes like Sarah. Holding him, I felt like crying, overwhelmed by his preciousness. I was grateful every day for Sarah, who took care of our son. I did what I could, but as a stay-at-home mom, she did so much for us. As our son grew, Sarah began studying again. She obtained her pharmacy technician certification and began working at a nearby pharmacy. The pharmacy offered flexible shifts, allowing her to finish work in time to pick up our son from his extracurricular activities. By that time, my earnings had increased significantly, and it would have been fine for Sarah to remain a full-time homemaker, but she had always been interested in pharmacy work and planned to study after childbirth. I was proud of my hard-working and ambitious wife. More than 20 years have passed since our son was born. I'm an old man now. Our son Jason graduated from university this spring and got a job. He's working for a major bank far from home and is coming back for a holiday break. I believe our son Jason is very talented as he secured a position at a mega bank. I'm proud of him. Today, Sarah and I are being treated to steak by our son with his first salary at that high-end steak restaurant. The chef, now in his mid-seventies, was in his mid-fifties when I first spoke to him. Hey there, is this your son? Yes, this is my son, Jason. 
Nice to meet you. I heard from my dad and mom that they really love this steak place. I thought I'd treat them. What a great son you have. You must be proud of him. Ha, ah, he's excellent. Unlike me. Oh, come on, Tom, you're great too. Aren't you a vice president now? Well, I'm just the vice president of a small company. That's still impressive. Now please enjoy your meal. We started with the appetizing salad and ordered soup. Every single piece was so delicious, it felt like our cheeks might fall off. Jason, who was eating steak from this place for the first time, was also moved. Dad, this steak is really amazing. Well, I've never had steak this tender before, I said, savoring each bite. I could eat loads of it. It's so good it makes me glad to be alive. Yeah, I love the steak too. I could eat it endlessly, Jason added, clearly enjoying his meal. Thanks for making the reservation today. Being treated by you is like a dream come true. You've really grown up well, Sarah said, her eyes glowing with pride. I'm old enough now, right? I finally became a working adult, so I need to thank mom and dad. It wouldn't feel right otherwise. Ah, you've become so dependable, I said, smiling warmly. And this bread is absolutely delicious, too. Where did they make it? Oh, that's from Westfield Farm Bread, Jason said with a thoughtful look. You know, from that large farm. Ah, the large farm along the highway. I didn't know they grew wheat there. That's new to me. By the way, is Jennifer doing well? What is she up to these days? Jason's face fell a little. Actually, she passed away recently from cancer. I was quite shocked when I found out. What? She passed away. That's so sad, I said, unable to believe it. Jennifer was battling cancer. I had no idea. Well, Dad and Mom, you guys knew her well, Jason said quietly. Sort of. She was a lady who was very kind to us. We didn't even get to say goodbye. It was a private funeral, and I only went to her grave. Jennifer was working hard at the farm until the end, I said, my voice thick with emotion. Thinking about it every day, she really loved the farm. We'll never forget the vegetables and fruits filled with Jennifer's love. She was truly dedicated to running the farm. Now her son has taken over and is running the farm with his father, Jason added softly. This bread is made using a secret recipe passed down, so it's exactly like Jennifer's taste. Jennifer's bread, I said, fighting back tears. Don't cry too much. Let's eat with a smile to help Jennifer's spirit rest in peace. Yeah, you're right. Thank you, Jennifer, for everything, Sarah said quietly. We sat in silence for a moment, reflecting on Jennifer's dedication and the mark she left on the world. Our son has grown up well, and we can eat steak together as a family, I said, trying to focus on the present. We hadn't known about Jennifer's passing. We'd been so busy and hardly visited the steak restaurant, so we never bumped into her. Jennifer had been battling terminal breast cancer, but even after hospitalization and discharge, she kept working hard at the farm. It made me realize how deeply she cherished the crops she grew. I deeply respected her dedication and love for the crops she grew, I said quietly, putting her life into her work. After praying for Jennifer's soul, we continued to enjoy the steak. Chasen smoothly paid the bill when it was time, and seeing him grown up like this reassured me. It was impressive to see him handling such a large amount so effortlessly. When I was a new graduate starting in a company, I was so poor, I said with a small laugh. I hesitated to buy meals at convenience stores. It's a stark contrast now. Since then, we'd been going to the steak restaurant for every special occasion. The chef had grown old and his son had taken over. Originally, his son was a company employee, but he trained to become a steak chef. I want to keep working hard so I can continue to enjoy delicious steak and show appreciation for all the hard times my wife has been through, I said, feeling a sense of gratitude. I plan to take her there again for her next birthday. 
I was thankful for everything we had overcome as a family and looked forward to many more milestones together.